all right guys in this video i'm going to be going over an example of a reaction and its mechanism so first things first every single reaction you want to one identify the nucleophile and the electrophile if i the nucleophile and the electrophile okay well then we can say what's the nucleophile this is the thing with the electrons so something with, for example, a lone pair or a pi bond. So here on the left-hand side, I have a compound. Where are the pi bonds? Where are the lone pairs? A really good habit to get into is always highlighting all the lone pairs and all the electrons in the pi bonds that could participate in the reaction. So then I'm going to go to my reagent and say, okay, I have an Na+. Plus. Okay, if I, ever, if I ever have an Na+, plus or a K+, plus, that means I can kind of forget it's there, and whatever it's with, I can say is a nucleophile, H-. minus. So I got lone pairs, pi bonds, and I also have a minus charged atom. Which one would be the best nucleophile? Well, the most reactive one. So technically, yes, this H is minus because there is a lone pair, but... A minus charged atom is more reactive than an atom with a lone pair that is neutral. So this guy is going to be the nucleophile minus. So by consequence, this whole compound is the electrophile. Step number two is the nucleophile minus attacks the electrophile. So where does it attack on the electrophile? Well, it's going to attack the most delta plus atom. So we have an H delta plus delta minus. There's also a benzene ring here. This is an acidic proton. So this H will take its lone pair and go to in. Highlight the electrons in this bond that is about to break. To out. And this will be the result of step one. I've denoted this as a circle because of resonance. If we said these were carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, this is arbitrary. They all will have electrons at some point. The resonance is like buzzing bees all over this entire benzene ring. Hence, you can just denote it as a circle rather than three individual pi bonds. So here we have an S. Originally, it had two sets of lone pairs in pink, but now we just gained the lone pair. That is blue because these are the two electrons that used to occupy the SH bond, but that H was attacked by the nucleophile. And then the two electrons in that bond were left on the sulfur, but now its formal charge is minus. So we must do this all over again. Step one, identify the nucleophile. Well, look, we got a, a minus charged atom again. So this is going to be my nucleophile. So then on the other reagent, this is my electrophile. Where is the delta plus atom? Well, chlorine is a delta minus atom. So by consequence, the carbon directly connected to it is delta plus. There's a dipole pulling electrons towards that chlorine. Hence, this nucleophile will take back of the arrow from a lone pair to in. It attacks that delta plus atom. Then the two electrons initially in the bond between the delta plus and the delta minus atom will go to out and the chlorine initially has three sets of lone pairs so what do we get well we have the benzene ring this is really just an r group we have the s and it is now going to be attached to label your carbons one two three one two three one two three carbons it's always good to dot your carbons so then you don't add or drop a carbon this is your final structure and then you have a plus cl minus oh we still had that na plus from the beginning and then plus an h2 which was the result of our first nucleophilic attack and then you can clean this up a little bit if you would like like one two three one two three so it'll look a little nicer there but that is your product Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions and don't forget to comment and like and subscribe if you found this video helpful and let me know what type of video you'd like me to do next.